I've said it before, I've said it a thousand times. Setting aside whatever you or I or anyone might think about how the laws should be, you know, uh, where does wacky tobacco belong on the scale compared to it's not addictive like cigarettes and it's uh, doesn't doesn't cause, you know, extreme uh, violent antisocial behavior like alcohol does. That said, I, I, I I don't buy that it's 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 not harmful at all, right? But at the same time, in terms of it as an antisocial thing, um, certainly I, I would put it below tobacco and uh, alcohol for offensiveness. And you know, I think it's silly. I, I'd be in favor of legalization wherever. Um, but that's not where Japan is right now. And if you're in Japan, you've got to follow the rules here. Uh, and as much as uh, cannabis oil, again, I've seen all the Facebook, you know, New Age posts talking about what wonderful stuff it is. And I'm sure that it is. I mean, I've heard, I've, I've seen the anecdotes of people with arthritis and, you know, people who use it in cooking and whatnot. And I'm sure it's got lots of uh, positive sort of benefits. But fact remains, uh, this is like trying to smuggle. This is like Walter White trying to, you know, put a, bring a container of meth methylamine into Japan. You are going to get into a lot of trouble. This case here that a teacher was arrested for trying to smuggle apparently like a couple of liters of the stuff in uh, hidden in uh, shampoo bottles. And the fact that the teacher in question is 43 years old and owns a, an English school in Ibaraki. Uh, there's a, there's a, lot of, a, a lot to break down here. I mean, this is something that I could imagine a 22-year-old who's just going through that phase that I went through and every 22-year-old goes through of just making a lot of incredibly stupid, poorly thought through life decisions. Uh, you're supposed to get your ass kicked all through your 20s making dumb mistakes like this, that, you know, picking up the scars. The 43-year-old people are not wiser than other people. They just have uh, PTSD and scars. You know, that's 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 what wisdom is. Uh, wisdom is, is this knowledge that's built up over time. It's just, it's just trauma uh, manifesting and, and no longer doing dumb shit that you do because you don't know any better when you're in your 20s. How someone could make it all the way to 43 years old <laughs> uh, and, and decide at that point to smuggle a couple of liters of cannabis oil uh, into Japan. And, and again, if you need reminding, I've talked about this before. Aside from the fact no one gives a crap about what the law should be in Japan or what your ideas on legalization or anything else are. They care about the rules and this will land you in two situations. One, you will be in jail on serious charges and you know, your trial, you could be in jail for like a year and a half before you even go to trial and you'll get serious prison time on top of that for something like this. Like this will be treated as a serious drug crime. On top of that, even the best case is that they'll deport you. But again, if you're a 43 year old who owns a school in Ibaraki, that's basically being kicked out of the country. That's not a light punishment. It's not the same as a tourist being sent home. You know, this is like destroying your whole life. And on top of that, while you're waiting for that, you'll be sent to immigration detention. And immigration detention in Japan is by all accounts a bit like the Stanford University prison experiment. It's basically run, it's not a normal prison with people, I mean, prisoners in Japan, prisons in Japan are run by proper prison officials. And the prisoners have human rights you know that, that there's a prison doctor there's uh, you know there's a certain modicum of rights because everyone there are Japanese citizens immigration detention is run by amateurs who are not proper prison people they're basically like the, the Stanford University students who are given batons and told to control the you know control the other people people die in these things all the time I've heard stories of people who have been uh, held in immigration detention and they are rightfully called the outer circles of hell um, and that's your best case is ending up in immigration detention for this sort of thing. So like I say, um, I'm all for, you know, um, e eventually fixing and improving these laws and making something like this as minor as the person doing it probably thought that it was. And I thought maybe maybe they thought they'd get away with it or something like that. But seriously, the, the, the consequences of getting caught for something like this are so completely disproportionate. Um, you know that the risk is just so not worth it. Please, please, please do not do something like this in Japan. This person is 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 going to you know is going to go through hell for this. Um, do I think that they deserve to go through hell for this? I, I don't. I, I think that the law is wrong, but it's a fact that they're going to go through it. And it's a fact that they're going to have very little to protect themselves from it. And like I say, the best case is getting deported. The worst case is, is a, a long time in jail and de deportation. So please, even if you are young and stupid enough to feel bold enough to get away with this, don't do it. But especially how in the hell you could be uh, same age as me or close to the same age as me and think that was a good idea, I don't know. But um, yeah, don't do this in Japan, you know. So that's the main story from that. But interesting story. Dan H., uh, 
what about we give up uh, L LDP uh, bureaucrats can of butter maybe we could kill two birds with one stone hey we could we could we could reform the whole system I I'm with the revolution but butter and cannabis oil why not Hiko Simon what if he sincerely apologizes and promises to never do it again that'll help that'll help actually I mean the first thing I mean remember the system here operates on conf I mean this is a case where the police are really probably not going to be struggling struggling to look for evidence uh, given that they caught the guy red-handed but uh, certainly the fact that the the justice system here works based on discounted penalties in exchange for confessions which is why there's a 99.9 percent .9%. it's not because the police are awesome at finding clues it's because they're awesome at beating suspects out of long-term detained isolated prisoners confessing will help um, and again, I think confessing will probably speed the route to, I think, the best outcome in this case, which is deportation. Even then, not good. And even then, we'll still involve a long amount of time and going through the jail system. But yeah, probably being defiant in a situation like this. Like I say, this is the worst thing about the system here is that actually, I know a case of a rugby uh, team, uh, Gaijin smashing. Uh, there, was, there was a case here where basically... Uh, a, a misbehaving gaijin smashing rugby team in tokyo went to karaoke and the one of the members of the team fell asleep in the room and the others thought that uh leave him with the bill since he fell asleep so everyone kind of went out one by one and then when then when the staff realized that the other rugby players had left the place they realized that there was one guy back left in the room and the manager and some of the staff went and woke up the guy and said he's got to pay for the whole thing the drunkenly asleep rugby player who was in the room uh, basically decided to try to get out and when the staff tried to block him he started like beating them physically like he punched them up basically one of the other people from the rugby team it was a bit of a laugh at first but when he thought that maybe something wasn't right he ran back in to uh, see if everything was okay apparently the the, the guy who woke up uh, beat up a few people and ran out of the karaoke place so just as he was coming back one of the other players came back in uh, and tried to sort of break up the fight and actually did pay the bill apparently and tried to settle it while the other guy ran away however the police decided to arrest both the guy who punched and beat up the manager and ran away as well as the guy who went back to sort everything out the guy who woke up and beat everybody up and, and ran out uh was actually convicted uh you know uh, but but the guy who came who actually sort of didn't actually take any money and did go back and, and, and sort it out and you know didn't didn't beat anybody up it took a year and a half for him to get to trial and he was in jail that entire time and because he was pleading innocent um, they deliberately drew out the period of his detention and it was one of those 0.1 percent cases where it went to trial and he was uh, acquitted at trial the other guy went to went to prison but this is the thing even if you didn't do it it's almost because you didn't do it it'll actually make it worse it's the horrible thing about it's why you don't want to get tangled with it with the police here in japan the worst thing you could ever be in the only thing worse than being caught doing this is is being mistaken for doing this and being caught um, uh, because actually pleading your innocence is going to make it a lot tougher tougher on yourself and this is why there's no question that there are so many people in japan who confess to things that they didn't do simply because they see that there's no way, way out so you know this was a case it was more than 10 years ago now that i'm aware of where this guy went through absolute hell had a lot of support unlike the other person who beat everyone up i mean i can sort of sympathize with the other guy that he was sort of left there and it was a bit of a prank but it was turned into armed robbery and it was also exacerbated by the fact that if in japan if you do martial arts rugby counts as a martial art any sort of uh, you know violence sort of skill if you're especially skilled because what happens in japan quite often is you'll have karate experts or judo experts that'll you know like kill people with a punch sometimes they'll get into a fight and they'll kill someone and it's that that'll be treated in that situation as if you assaulted someone with a deadly weapon so when they found out that these people were rugby players they actually treated them as aggravated assaults with deadly weapons more or less in terms of the fact that they weren't paying the karaoke bill and they assaulted people and they were rugby players it all added up that this was like a murder robbery or attempted murder robbery it was kind of the the gravity with which they were both being treated so again don't mess with the police just do not get do not look for trouble with the police that's a long answer to that but um quint rankin yeah good question and, and and if you get into the situation if you did it uh apologize the hell right away seriously it's not worth fighting it if you didn't do it get a really 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 good lawyer call up your embassy and get a lawyer get all the help you can muster because yeah you got a really really tough situation uh, in that situation i know a couple of cases like that but yeah so yeah crime in japan um you know 
I feel a little bit bad for police that they get kind of, you know, people, but the reason that Japanese do not talk, they ostracize police is because they know that you can get in trouble just for being, you know, near a situation or drawn in. So people ostracize them. And I feel bad for the way that police are often ostracized by the society here, but it's because people know that you just don't want to get tangled up with anything to do with them. So yeah.